Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a pretty cool one for you guys. We are going to take a look at an app called OSM and the maps. So awesome and maps, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that is what it looks like on your home screen. So I'm going to go ahead, open it up and here we go. So as you guys know, I love to review different cool applications. And this is one that I just thought was too cool to not review. So I had to reach out. I have to give a big thank you and shout out to Awesome Man Maps for sending. Uh, first of all, they sent the pro version out, the uh, yearly subscription. They sent that out free for review. But I told them I don't really like pushing subscriptions on my subscribers because I personally don't use subscriptions as much as possible. I like to use lifetime licenses. And I said, if you can downgrade me to the lifetime license, which has slightly fewer features, I'd rather review that one uh, for my subscribers because I know a lot of you guys have subscription fatigue. And if I show you another subscription app, you're probably just going to click off the video. So this does have a lifetime license option. It is a little steep. I think it's like 40 bucks right now. I'm not entirely sure, but they were able to give me one of those. So I'm going to review it from that perspective. Unfortunately, I do still have the pro version on top of that. Uh, so I think I still have all the other features, but there's really not many. I highly recommend going with the lifetime version if this is something you want. Yeah, the price is a little bit more upfront. I think in the long term, if you're going to keep using this, it's worth it. But just my opinion, I'll go ahead. I'll tell you guys the differences here in just a minute. So why did I look at this app? I noticed this app because I was sick and tired of seeing like Google Maps tracking and just seeing Google everywhere. So Google obviously loves collecting people's data and that is annoying. This app lets you take back control of your maps experience. Basically, you download everything that you want straight to your phone. You can use it offline. You can travel wherever you're going as long as you have it downloaded. So let's just do an example here. All the green ones I have already downloaded. So I got Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Alabama, basically all the routes that I uh, drive or travel to relatively frequently. Uh, I also got you know the Bahamas and the Caribbean down here. Let's just say I wanted to go down here to Jamaica. You can see right now it is kind of a green color. Let's go ahead and click on Jamaica and I can go ahead and download this map right now. So there are other maps, but I'm going to go ahead and just download this main one and it should download pretty quickly. There it goes. Uh, let's go to other maps. So I got, I can download the contour lines for the map. So those are obviously very important uh, depending on what you're doing. Let's go ahead and download all of these just for fun. I'm going to load up Jamaica. So if I go there, I'm going to literally have every map that I need. So if I don't have cellular service there, I can still get around and see what's going on. Uh, now, some people will say you shouldn't travel, you know, outside of certain areas in Jamaica. I'm not going to comment on that, but I like to be prepared and have everything uh, downloaded in advance. So this is contour lines in feet. I believe the other one was in meters. Uh, weather forecast. Now that is something for the pro edition, but I am downloading that right now just to show you guys and height map. We're going to get that as well. That's it. So I just downloaded all of Jamaica for the most part. Uh, so I can go ahead, zoom in and now look at how detailed this map is. Look at that. You can see all of the basically mountains right there. And I believe I'm in 2d mode. If I click on 3d, there we go. You can see all these peaks. This is crazy detail right here, guys. This is all offline. I can access it at any time without any internet connection. And I can see the heights of all these different peaks. I can, put a marker. If I want, I can navigate straight to it as a, as a favorite, uh, zoom out. So let's go ahead. First of all, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to get it back into 2d view just so that it's a little easier for you guys to see, see all the different airports and see all the different highways, the a three, the a four, the T three, the a one. Um, let's go up to Montego Bay. Where is it at? There it is. Uh, so there is the airport for Montego Bay. Everything is loaded up. I can see all the terminals. I can see the parking, the public parking. I can see kind of where, traffic goes. So all these little dots you're seeing here, these are photos that someone took at some point. And so if I click on one, there we go. It's called Mapillary. I've never heard of it, but someone took a picture at some point and I can now take a look at this kind of like Google street view. It's not quite as good, but there are a lot of photos that people have taken and I can kind of scroll around and get an idea of what's going on in the area and see how the streets look. You know, if there's anything that looks a little sketchy in that area, you know, maybe not go there. Now, this is obviously just scratching the surface of this app. This app is enormous. You can do so much with it, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys an example of downloading a location, in this case, Jamaica, and showing you what you can do there. Now, on top of this, there's also a little bit more information as far as overlays that you can put on this. So if I click on this button here and I click on configure map at the top, I can go to a POI overlay and I can see accommodation. 
So there you go. Those just added to the top charging stations, cafe and restaurants, convenience and supermarket, emergency. So that's kind of important. Uh, filling station, all types of different things. And these are now overlaid on the map, easy to find. Uh, so I can just zoom in here to Castaways Villa. Looks pretty cool. I can get more information. Now they do not have any photos for it, but I can add them myself and kind of contribute if I want. And if I click on actions, I got even more. So I got directions from, search nearby, add parking, add waypoint, plan a route, avoid road. So you can really customize this to get it exactly how you want it. I'm gonna swipe down here to kind of clear that. But before we get too far into this, let's talk about the layout. Obviously you're thrown right into the map. So if I click on this top little icon up here, this little globe, I don't know what these other little buttons do. I think they might be custom profiles that you can set for different maps. In fact, I'm fairly certain that's what it is, but there's documentation is a little bit sus on this, so it's kind of hard to be for sure, but I think that's what it is. So you can have different profiles to see different things. And that's gonna make sense here in a second because you can turn on and off favorites. I've got the POI overlays, which I already did here. I'm gonna delete that. But on top of that, we've also got point labels here that I can turn on or off. I've got Wikipedia. So if you want to have some information about a location, uh, I can turn that on. So there's a few locations here that appear to have wikis on them. So that is cool to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. Street level imagery, that was what was turned on before the green. So tracks right here, I can go ahead and uh, import those if I have them. So if you do a lot of hiking, you will definitely know what that is. Uh, show borders and downloaded maps, I've got that turned on. Cycle routes, so if you cycle in different areas, you might wanna use that. So I don't really know what mountain bike scale is or IMDA trails is. I don't use that. I'm not a mountain biker, so that's that. You got difficulty classification, hiking routes, which I think a lot of people are gonna actually use with this. But you can color your routes by OSMC, network affiliation or node networks. I'm gonna keep that off for now. I'm gonna go back into here and take a quick peek at what we've got. So I can show all. There's even more rafting, horseback, running, fitness, all types of different things. Map type. Now this is where things get even more interesting because you can totally customize your style of map. So they got these for offline. They also have online maps if you prefer that. But let's just go to off-road just to show you guys a stark difference. Uh, you can already see how different this is. Let's go up to, let's go to Tennessee. I'm just going to zoom in to somewhere here. So for off-road maps, you guys can see this looks different. I'm going to go ahead and switch it again in real time just to show you guys. So I'm gonna switch it to, uh, let's just do snowmobile. You can already see it changed. Uh, let's do desert, change it again, change it again, topo. So this is maybe even more important if you're hiking, uh, if you wanna see a topo map. It's got even more options there. Let's go back to OSM A and D because that's what I like to keep it on personally. But this gets even more crazy because that's just the map type. Then you've got map mode, you've got day, you've got nights, you've got sunrise, sunset, so have it automatically switch for you. But if we go back in here, we can change the map magnifier, text size, details. I mean, look how, this is crazy detailed. You can turn these on or off. Let's go back into here. Uh, so we can hide different things. If you want to hide boundaries, buildings, military bases, whatever, you can hide those from the map at any time. Transport, you can turn that on or off. Road style, you can do default, American Road Atlas, bold outline. You can see these kind of change in real time. High contrast, maybe it's kind of hard to see. Personally, I like default, but you can always change that to whatever you'd like. Contour lines, I keep that on personally. Terrain and nautical depth, I like that. But where things get really crazy is with overlay and underlay. So if I turn on an overlay here, I can put another map on top of this one with even more information. So let's just go to Yandex Satellite. If I go here, uh, this is going to place it on top of what I already have really, really cool stuff. So you can customize this. Of course, you can customize it even more because there's underlays. So you can turn that on and have another completely different map under it. So you got the hike bike map. You've got fire hydrants if you want to see where those are. One of my favorites, uh, I think it's actually already on there. It shows you where those big overhead power lines are, the big ones. It's already on there, I think. But what's really cool, you got open flight maps as well. So we could turn that one on. I'm not sure how it's going to show up. Uh, given that I have an overlay and an underlay, but uh, yeah, you can change those at will. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for now. You also have weather. So right now I've just got cloud on, but I could turn on temperature as well. There we go. So now that is overlaid on top to give you guys an idea of what the weather is like. Now, this is one of the pro features that you have to subscribe to. Uh, personally, I don't think weather is too important because you can get another app for that. Uh, definitely not a reason, at least for me to subscribe to this. But if you want it, you do have to subscribe. The lifetime doesn't give you access to that, unfortunately. Precipitation, I can turn that on. You can kind of see what's going on. I understand why some people might want to subscribe to that though. Uh, have everything all in one. 
contours, I can turn that on. If I so choose, I'm gonna leave that off for now. But if I zoom into a location here, I can see all types of things. I can see the railroad tracks. I can see, obviously, the photos that other people have taken. I can see different cities. I can also see, if you guys look here, see all these little black squares? These are those high voltage power lines. Before I purchased one of my houses, I was actually looking to find a map that actually had all of these, and I couldn't find one. This thing is crazy. It has all of those high voltage power lines maps, and you can easily go through and look at them, see where they're at. Maybe you don't wanna live near them for whatever reason, if you're like myself. So you wanna avoid where those are at, and you want to find a map and kind of correlate that to Zillow or wherever you're looking for houses. Uh, I personally like realtor.com a little bit more, but regardless, uh, you might want to take a look and see where those high voltage power lines are. And let's just say you wanna avoid them. Well, you can find them all here and do just that. You can avoid them. Very easy to do. Those are pretty much baked into this. I don't think you need any specific uh, overlay for that, but this has just so, so, so much information. I mean, it's got the city uh, lines, like I said, uh, you can see where everything's at. If there was some sort of, let's just say, natural disaster or catastrophe, and there was no internet, this would be something that you would probably want to have just to be able to see where everything is. Every lake, every river, every stream, see where it connects to. Uh, this is something that a lot of preppers probably want to have. And I think just average people should have it too. What if you're traveling through the mountains, you lose reception, Google Maps doesn't work for some reason. This is something to have. Now, navigating with this is a totally different story. I didn't have the best of luck with it just because it's hard to search for an address. So if you're looking to type in someone's address like you would in Google Maps, it's not gonna work quite the same. Now I do hope in the future they can get some sort of technology added that can make it a little easier to search for addresses, but for now it's a little bit difficult. Uh, you kind of either have to drop the pin yourself and navigate to it, uh, and sometimes it doesn't take you on the best routes, or you'll have to do uh, some messing around with just typing in like the city name and just navigating there and figuring out the rest. I wouldn't use it for a long trip. This is better for like if you're not in a car, maybe you're walking, hiking, doing something like that. I would use this. Uh, but for driving, I personally still stick to Apple Maps uh, because it's relatively private compared to Google Maps and uh, has better you know, privacy implications. However, this has obviously some of the best because it's all offline and you pretty much own the data at that point of your drive. Now, this also doesn't have traffic as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't think it has any of that. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of images here that I can look at on I-75 here which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's just uh, the nature of the beast. If you want something that's more private, you're probably not gonna get much traffic info. Now traffic is pretty important to me. If you live in a big city, you, you kinda need to know where the accents are to avoid them. So you might have to use a couple different apps as your starting point for this one. Uh, let's go ahead and just click the record button. And you guys can see, you can start tracking your recording. You can log the interval in five seconds all the way down to the minimum, which is I believe one second and then it goes up to five minutes. So you can choose how often you want it to log. Remember my choice and show on map. Uh, so if you want to start recording before you go on a hike or something so that you can export that later, get all your cool data, you could do that. All right, so this is gonna be kind of hard to show on camera, but I put in a random address going to Atlanta. This is what it shows. It shows how many miles are left, the time you'll get there, how fast you're going, if you wanna record, and the next direction that it wants you to take. Very interesting how it lays this out. I checked a couple of these. It was pretty accurate actually. It's showing the correct routes uh, because I've driven certain ones before. Uh, and you know, it's hard to complain about this. I mean, it looks overall pretty good. It's just hard to, you can't just search up like McDonald's and expect to find the right one uh, super quickly, especially if you are in a rush to find something. It could be a little confusing and frustrating at first just because this app is so different from the others. Like Google Maps, they just wanna make it as quick and easy as possible so you stay with their app and so that you continue using them so they can keep you know, harvesting your data. This one, it's different. It's, it's a little clunkier, but I think that you know, some of that might be worth the trade-off. Another thing that's pretty cool is uh, you know, with these random addresses that I put in here, you can see the elevation incline, decline, the feet uh, right there uh, going up and down, as well as some of the terrain, which is really cool. You can see as you go through the mountains and you know how it changes, you can click on details and get even more. And you can see here, you can kind of scrub through to see where it is. So you can see my little dot up there moving as I scrub through this. Very, very, very powerful stuff right here. Uh, there's a couple other apps that do this on the App Store. I personally uh, always check those other apps. I guess I don't have to anymore now that I have this one. Uh, before I go on a long road trip to see what the incline is going to be, what the weather's going to be, 
you know, am I going through mountains? Is there going to be fog? I like to be up to date with all of that um, just so that I have the best chance of getting where I'm going safely uh, with how I drive. I like to have as much situational awareness as possible, uh, if that makes sense. I think something like this could be something that I could add to my tool belt. I think you guys could probably as well once you get used to the app. So here's what I recommend. Download the app. It's free. Try it out. See if you like it. Maybe start the free trial. Make sure you cancel it if you don't, you know, just cancel it anyway, just in case uh, and resubscribe if you do like it. Now, if you do like it and you don't care about weather or some of the other small features that the pro version brings, consider getting the lifetime license. I think that's the better deal uh, overall if you're going to continue to use it. Now, there's a whole lot more I could go through here. It could be like an hour long video. There's so many features crammed in here. You can zoom into different places and just find out tons of things that you never knew about. Uh, I mean, you can see the contour lines, the rivers, the names, different parks, stuff that some of this stuff's not even on Google Maps because they don't want to show you too much. But with these overlays, I mean, you could put whatever you want. You can add places to this. You can import, export. You can mark different things on the map if you want. Uh, let's see what else we've got maps and resources right here. So I've got 15 gigs stored on my phone. That's all totally offline. I can use that as much as I want. I can delete these. Uh, of course, I've got Antarctica. I didn't download their weather for today yet, but I can go ahead and do that if I would like. But yeah, that's kind of like the local storage. You got updates here, uh, live updates, weather forecast, stuff like that worldwide. I can go ahead and just download uh, different maps. So Antarctica, uh, that's not that's not. <laughs> Not a very good one to show you guys, but let's just go to Bahrain. I can download those right from here. I don't have to click through every single one of them. So this is kind of a quicker way to download what you want. I've of course got the worldwide overview map downloaded. I think that comes with it, but I could be wrong. Nautical maps, stuff that you might not even think about. A lot of people don't know how the ocean works and different contours and sea marks. And this has a bunch of different lakes and contours that you can guys can go through. Just a ton of different things you can do here. Now, Travel Guides is in beta still, but if you want, you can click on one like Atlanta East. So I can go through here and you know go through these different, a lot of these links straight to uh, Wikipedia. And they've got some information. Let's see, Metro Atlanta could be a little sketchy. Might not want to do that. Yeah, you can go to like Stone Mountain, see some information about that. You know, what you can see, what you can do there, how far away it is from you, things like of that nature. That's in beta, like I said, it's still developing. Uh, they're still working on that. If you hit the navigation, you can go straight to, uh, you know, navigating to where you want to go. Like I said, searching for things, it's a little tough on here. Uh, you just got to keep that in mind. That's just the way it goes with this. Once you get the hang of it, it's a little better. Like I said, those files, uh, the GPX files and other things like that, you can add in uh, right from there and pull them straight in. Weather, again, if you have pro, you guys can see, I can go through the weather here and just zoom out here. Uh, I can go through the weather. I can get temperature, see what it's going to be like, you know, in a few hours versus right now. Go to the rain as well. It's really cool if you care about the weather in this app. But again, like I said, might not be worth it to you. Configure screen. This is where we get really into the weeds of getting this exactly dialed in. So I recommend going through everything else first, then going through this later, but you guys can change the left and right panels. You can go to the bottom panel, change all that transparent widgets, compass. Uh, you can have that always visible, always hidden distance by tap, quick action on or off. So I've got it off right now, but if you turn that on, you can go ahead and add a favorite. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. Change map, day mode, whatever. I'm going to disable that because I don't need it. And then 3D mode, you can turn that on or off if you like. Now, while we're on this, let's just go into plugins. And I'm going to show you, I've already downloaded a lot of these, but I've got external sensors. You can add that on as well, or open street map editing. Those are the two I haven't done just because I don't edit. And I also don't have external sensors currently, but if you do, you can integrate that right into the app settings here. You can back up to the cloud, check your purchases, uh, turn on your driving base profile. I don't know why that was turned off. I must have uh, done something stupid there, but you can see there's a bunch of different ones. Those are those things I was talking about earlier, the profiles, edit them, add a new one. You can back up. Uh, I highly recommend doing that as well, just so you have a backup of your data. Wow, that was a ton, guys. This is an incredible application. I definitely wish I would have known about this sooner just because uh, the people from the privacy community and people from like the outdoors community probably use this for two completely different tasks. I definitely think that this is something that a lot more people could get use out of and see how it works and see just how powerful it is. So check it out, guys. Links to it down below. Big thank you and shout out to Osman Maps for sending the code out free for review for this application. If you like the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.